Besides the main dish, I know we all look forward to the side dishes and appetizers during the holidays. If you're looking for some new or even level up your sides and appetizers, get ready because I'm about to get you excited to get in the kitchen this holiday. Aprons on, let's go. Let's level up our green bean casserole. Annette says that she always makes green bean casserole. We love the canned cream of mushroom soup recipe, but let's make our own fresh green bean casserole. Boil a big pot of water, add two tablespoons of salt, get a big bowl of ice water ready, cook the green beans until they're about crisp tender, well, we're, we'll say about six minutes. When they are done, we're gonna pour these into a colander and then hit them straight into the ice bath. Grab a bowl, add a half a cup of panko crumbs, three cups of the fried onions, and then you're gonna add two tablespoons of olive oil. We're gonna give this a good mix, set this aside. To the same pot, add your butter, melt it down, add in your garlic, your mushrooms, and salt and pepper. We're gonna cook until the mushrooms release their moisture and the liquid evaporates, so probably about six minutes. Okay, the liquid in my mushrooms are taking much longer to evaporate, so I am just gonna continue. We're gonna add three tablespoons of flour in and cook that for about a minute. We're gonna stir in the cup and a half of the chicken stock and stir consistently. And then we're gonna bring this to a simmer. Once it starts simmering, add the cream. That's one and a half cups. We're gonna reduce the heat to medium and we're gonna let this simmer until the sauce thickens. Then we'll salt and pepper it to taste. Okay, you're going to rinse your green beans, get much of the cold liquid off of them, and then you're going to drop them into the cream mixture and evenly coat them. You're gonna make this ahead of time freeze in a foil pan. Then allow the casserole to thaw one to three days before your event. Okay, when you're ready to heat it up, put in a 425 degree oven for 10 minutes. Then add the topping and then bake for another 20 minutes or until the top is golden brown and bubbly on the edges. Mmm, it is all done bubbly and golden brown. Julie says that instead of green bean casserole, she sautés up fresh green beans in bacon fat. Toss in a little piece of bacon and drizzle honey over it. Yum. Christiane is from Germany and she says that we eat goose, red cabbage, potato dumplings, and gravy for Christmas. Christiane, I was introduced to red cabbage when I married my husband, and now it's one of my favorite side dishes for the holidays. Okay, we're gonna take this red cabbage and finely shred it. So you can either finely shred it or just chop it. Start off with two cups vinegar, but you're probably gonna add a lot more in this process because while it's cooking and you take the lid off and you check on it, it has to make you cough. You wanna be like, whoa. I did end up adding another cup of vinegar. You're going to cook on low, covered for a couple hours. Keep checking on it to see if it needs more vinegar. So my cabbage has been cooking for over an hour. And then you add a couple of tablespoons of butter and then stir it off with a fourth to a half cup of sugar. This is all to taste. So if it's a little too bitter for you, add more sugar and then let it cook for a little while. Do you see all this liquid? I drained some of the juice. I added a little more butter and sugar in and I left enough of the water so it wouldn't burn. So overall, this cooked for about two hours on the stove. It's sweet and tangy all at once and it's great topped on pork and turkey. Catherine says her husband expects a sweet potato casserole with pecan crumb topping. Catherine, last year was the first year I learned how to make a sweet potato casserole. Let me share with you the recipe. What you'll need is two pounds of sweet potatoes. I'm gonna peel and chop these sweet potatoes. Now we're gonna get this in some water and boil them up. And they'll cook for about 10 or 15 minutes, just until they're tender. You're gonna drain them, get them in a large bowl. Okay, we're gonna add the granulated sugar, fourth a cup of evaporated milk, three tablespoons of melted butter. So I have two on reserve for the crust. A half a teaspoon of salt. And then you're gonna put a teaspoon of the vanilla. We're gonna beat this together. All right, you're gonna add two eggs. And then we're gonna beat this well together with the eggs. Tried to get it as smooth as I possibly could. Now we're gonna get this in a pan. Okay, I'm gonna smooth this out and then I'll set this aside and then we'll prepare the topping. We're gonna whisk together the flour, which is the third a cup, and then two thirds cup packed brown sugar. We just need an eighth a teaspoon of salt. 
And then we're going to put in the last two tablespoons of butter. We're gonna crumble this up and then we're gonna get this on top of that casserole. This is gonna bake for 25 minutes until golden brown. When it was done, for 45 seconds, I had it under the boiler. Crisp that up, look at that. This smells so, so good. This is delicious, but alongside all of your holiday hams and turkeys, this is, I think, a great side dish. This is delicious. Now, Donita has a sweet take on her sweet potatoes. She mashes together the sweet potatoes with crushed pineapple and brown sugar butter. She tops it off with some marshmallows that are lightly browned. That sounds amazing. Next is stuffing. And Sherry says, stuffing, stuffing, stuffing. I agree. Stuffing is my favorite side dish for the holidays. Let me share with you how you can make it in your slow cooker. Melt one and a half cups of butter in your pan and you'll saute up together 12 ounces of sliced mushroom and a cup each of onion and chopped celery. Saute these up until they're translucent and you can add one fourth cup of chopped fresh parsley at this point. In a bowl, add 12 cups of bread cubes. So I need dried sage, dried thyme, dried marjoram, salt, and pepper. We're gonna pour in our veggies. Four and a half cups of chicken broth or as needed. I don't want it too soggy. So I am gonna start with the can. All right, it's at a pretty good point, but I am gonna add some more. I'm liking this. This is going to cook on high for an hour and then low for like eight. I do fluff it up periodically and sometimes I move my lid sideways on it or I'll put a paper towel in to collect the moisture. Fluff it up when it's done and it's absolutely delicious. If you love stuffing as much as I do, check my description box. I have two more stuffing recipes for you. My mom's rolls are addicting and they make a ton. Best part, you can freeze them. To your mixer, you're gonna add your eggs, sugar, cold water, and salt. For your yeast mixture, you're gonna mix it with some warm water and sugar and let it rise for two to five minutes. When your yeast mixture is ready, add it on in. On your stove, you're gonna boil one cup of water and add in one cup of shortening and let it melt. Let it cool down for a minute and add it to your mixture. Mix this mixture until it's well combined and then add seven and a half cups of flour. And keep mixing. Okay, I'm gonna spray my hands. I'm gonna add my dough mixture in, and then I'm gonna put a wet cheesecloth over the top and put this in our refrigerator to get really cold so then we can work with it. Two hours before baking, take your bowl out of the fridge, roll them up into balls, place them on a baking sheet or pan, and have them rise until they double in size. You'll bake at 400 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes. Would you look at those, Derek? Oh, the beautiful clock. They're fluffy. Ooh, look at these, they're airy and fluffy. They are so good. You can even freeze the dough to have rolls throughout the holiday season. I just took them out of the fridge. They have risen and they're nice and cold and ready to work with. I'm gonna roll these out and then stick these trays into our freezer. They're gonna freeze and I'm gonna let them freeze for probably about two hours. And then I'm going to take them and put them in a Ziploc bag all together and seal that up and put it in the freezer. Amy Griffin says that for the holidays, hands down they have to have fresh cranberry salsa served over cream cheese with crackers. Amy, I totally agree with you. Finally, chop your cranberries, cilantro, green onions, and jalapenos in a food processor or blender. To that mixture, add your cup of sugar, one fourth teaspoon of the cumin powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt. Squeeze some lime juice with that. Then place your bowl in the refrigerator to chill for at least an hour before serving. Serve this over some cream cheese with your crackers, chips, or top it on top of some pork, chicken, or turkey. I absolutely love making grazing boards during the holidays. Of course they make a great appetizer. They're great to make for lunch, especially if you have picky eaters. I'm just trying to make it look pretty with placement. So I had some club crackers, I picked up some beautiful crisp grapes from Trader Joe's, and then I have some smoked Gouda cheese that I'm just quartering up and then going to slice them so they can easily have a piece of Gouda on a cracker with some meat. Have fun making these boards. It's really just for the eye, but I love having lunches like this and making a board. If you wanna make your salamis look like pretty little roses, all you need to do is take a wine glass and start folding your salamis over the edge of it and just keep layering it like that. 
turn it upside down, and you have a beautiful rose. Christmas last year, I made a grazing board for lunch, which was perfect since we had a big breakfast. That board was full of sweet and salty. We had cheeses, dips, fruit, crackers, cookies, candy, nuts, popcorn. It was perfect. This raspberry pretzel salad technically is a dessert, but we love serving it up as a side dish at Thanksgiving. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take pretzels and you're gonna bang them out until you get about two cups. You could do half pretzel and half pecans. Add three tablespoons of sugar and add anywhere from one half cup to three fourths cup melted butter. You're gonna spread and press evenly into a nine by 13 pan and then you'll bake at 400 degrees for 10 minutes and then let it cool. You'll need eight ounces of cream cheese, a cup of sugar. You'll cream together the cream cheese and the sugar, then carefully fold in the large container of Cool Whip and then spread the mixture over the cooled pretzel mix. In a small pot, you're gonna boil two cups of water, then add either one big box, six ounces of raspberry jello, or two small packages, three ounces of raspberry jello. Stir until the powder is all dissolved, and then add two packages of frozen raspberries. And you're gonna stir them in until they thaw out. Gently pour over the cream cheese filling and chill until set. It's salty, it's sweet, and it is addicting but it wouldn't be Thanksgiving without it. Again, you can make it with strawberries, but I've also done this recipe with blueberries. Stay tuned. I'm gonna be sharing with you how you could take your holiday leftovers and transform them into some yummy new recipes. But first, click on this video here where we're gonna learn about pie crust, a new apple pie recipe, and making your own pumpkin pie puree. I'll see you over there. Thanks for joining me. Bye.